Good morning. This is Karen Morley in Black Crow Walking coming to you from Australia. And we are bringing you a study of A Course of Love by Mari Perrin. We're up to chapter 7, verse 20. And it's all about withholding. So we'll see what we're withholding today, Karen. <laughs> it is from your center that you will come to understand that relationship exists in wholeness. We have begun to dislodge your idea that you stand separate and alone, a being broken off from your, all the rest. Your forgiveness of all that has led to this misperception is not yet complete, nor will it be until you understand it, it, your understanding is greater than it is now. For you cannot give up the only reality you know without believing in and having at least some elementary understanding of what the truth of your reality actually is. If you cannot be alone, you must be continuously in relationship. Thus, relationship must not depend on interaction as you understand it. It is easy to see the relationship between a pencil and your hand, your body and another, the actions that you do and the effects they seem to cause. All of these relationships are based on what your senses tell you, the evidence you have relied upon to make sense of your world. Those who have developed reliance on ways of knowing not governed by the acceptable senses are seen as suspect. And yet you accept many causes for your feelings, from variations in the weather to unseen and unverifiable diseases. It's just very quiet, Karen. Ah, you have given others whom you see as having more authority than you, license to provide you with their version of the truth, and for consistency's sake, you choose to believe in the version of the truth most predominant in your society. Thus, the truth is different in one place than it is in another, and it even appears to be in conflict. You cling to known truths, even though you are aware of their instability in time as well as place. And so you live with constant denial that even what is known to you is not known at all. You thus cling to the one sure thing that permeates your existence, the knowledge that death will claim you and all of those you love. Well, ain't that the truth? <laughs> We're going to die, Karen. Oh, no. <laughs> but do we really die? No, we don't. The body dies, but we don't. All right. It is from your center that you will come to understand that relationship exists in wholeness. We have begun to dislodge your idea that you stand separate and alone, a being broken off from the rest. There's been times in my life where I've experienced loneliness and being alone, and it's been kind of devastating. But a total illusion because I wasn't uh, fully understanding that I'm never alone. That I am a part of humanity. I'm a part of, well, I am, I am the formless energy that lives within this body. Uh, which is joined to everything and everyone, Karen. And I, um, I feel like... Living in that separate, alone, being broken off from all the rest state is is kind of like a self-imposed prison. It's it's like uh, it's like tapping into the pain body that of non-reality. Just because we are physically in the room by ourselves does not mean we're alone. You know and um, and, you know, I, I have a friend who can't be alone for any minutes at all because um, they're used to, they grew up in a very large family. And uh, so to be alone 
for even if even a, a night is is like awful, awful pain for that person. So you know, I'm thinking um, about the illusion of aloneness and what we can do when we when we start when our pain body wants to feed off that aloneness. Uh, what can we do to actually bring ourselves back to knowing that we are never alone? Mm. And that total illusion to know that I'm buying into that illusion and I know I do buy into that illusion. I live on my own. My family have gone and moved somewhere else. And yes, I buy into the illusion that I am alone. Woe is me. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> um, yeah. So. And, yeah, it's hard to break out of that illusion of being alone. Yeah. And it, it's the word being broken off from all the rest. You know, that's, it, you know, we're not broken. We can think that we're broken. And that's what our mind would like us to think. And our mind would like us also to think that we are alone, but we're not. And when you come from the heart of love, you're connected with everything and everyone all the time. And when you think about it, like I have friends that all moved to Queensland. How dare they? <laughs> and for a while I used it as a really great excuse to travel north, you know, to see my friends. But the thing is that we're always connected whether we see each other or not. You know, it's always the same. And the love is always there. So feeling that connection in my heart when I, when I think of that person, I know that they're in my heart and that I am part of their lives and they are part of mine. Um, just from the absolute joy that comes when I experience thought of them, you know, when I, when I remember our our times together and, and, and when I'm wishing them well in sending them blessings and, you know, it's that, that heart is full and it's full of them, you know, and um, our relationship together, despite the fact that we're not in the same room. So we're not broken off from anybody, really. Your forgiveness of all that has led to this misperception is not yet complete. Nor will it be until you understand. Your understanding is greater than it is now. For you cannot give up the only reality you know without believing in and having at least some elementary understanding of what the truth of your reality actually is. The step, the step to take, the choice to make, is, um, for me is to really go back into that centered place to that heart place to that loving place and I and I'm learning more and more that each time that feeling of brokenness or separation or um, angst that surfaces is just purely a signal to me to be aware that that doesn't have to be that isn't what is and to come back again so to me, I'm learning, learning, I'm a beginning, I feel like a babe in the woods, just learning to, um, one, recognise this is what's happening, and two, coming back. And that to me is a, you know, a huge leap as a babe. For you cannot give up the only reality you know without believing in and having at least some elementary understanding of what the truth of your reality actually is. And is that the way humanity really is, Karen? Is it, is it we're so secure in what we know that we cannot give it up unless we can find something better to replace it with? Find something truth, some truth to replace it or to, you know, hook into the reality of and you know truth is such a transient thing for me but I, I think we'll talk about that as we go on because your your chapter is some um... mm -hmm. if you cannot be alone you must be continuously in relationship 
And from hearing what you said, Bro, that yes, even though somebody isn't physically present, talking about a person here, that they could be at a distance physically from you, they are actually, you're still in relationship with them. There's still a memory of them. There's still that heartfelt joy when you think about them. Um, and you can reach out. We've also got phones, even though we're physically not connected. <laughs> no, you mean we don't have to send the horse and cart? <laughs> the tel telegram. <laughs> what did you say? Or a letter. Or um, a letter that takes forever. Yeah, or the telegram, you know, yeah. Morse code and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we're, we're very lucky these days that we have an opportunity to be in the presence of someone or to just instantly flick them a message. Um, so, but we are in relationship with everyone, whether we're alone or we're not alone. Thus, relationship must not depend on interaction as you understand it. It is easy to see the relationship between a pencil and your hand, your body and another, the action that you do and the effects they seem to cause. So we believe in what we see, Karen. Yep. Physically see and do at that moment. Mm. Yeah. And yet there's so much in the unseen. And we accept some of it, but not all of it. Moving. How expansive is this to be to go beyond the just, you know, this glass is here and in my hand, or this table is, you know, right in front of me. There's so much more, and that is exciting. That there's more than I just see or feel and touch or hear at this very moment. Well, in that glass, Karen, there's water. And in the water is vast intelligence. Vast intelligence. And every single drop of that water is a universe unto itself. And it thinks it's alone. But then it recognises that it's not alone. It has a whole lot of other drops of water with it, making it, a, making it one body of water. And that water is continuously returning to itself. And you think of an ocean too, all the little droplets that are in an ocean and it's vast and expansive. But it doesn't see itself, I don't think it sees itself as separate like what we do. Well, maybe the illusion of a wave might be separate. Maybe it says, oh, I'm a wave. <laughs> but then it falls back into the water and it's not a wave after all. It was only an illusion. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Do you want to carry on, all of? All of these relationships are based on what your senses tell you, the evidence you have relied upon to make sense of your world. Those who have developed reliance on ways of knowing, not governed by the accepted acceptable senses, are seen as suspect. Ooh. <laughs> That's it, yeah. And I, I think when I was in Christianity, anything that you couldn't see or touch was evil, you know. <laughs> you know, the unseen was uh, unimaginable and, and you don't go there. <laughs> and yet I did go there. <laughs> I did go there often um, with, you know, believing in the Holy Spirit and believing in God is, is, is believing in the unseen. So it's... Complete contrast, really. Mm -hmm. yep. And yet you accept many causes for your feelings, from variations in weather to the unseen and unverifiable diseases. Yeah, so we often blame things on the moon, don't we? <laughs> the moon is making us crazy or the, or the westerly winds are making us crazy. Um, yeah, so we... we find causes for our feelings wow. and even you know the, our own body um our own body movements and and moods and um hormone hormonal swings and things like that are all um something that we we believe in the unseen yeah to go back to finding the cause why not 
just use it as a signal to come back to who we are. So there's this searching for why is this so? Why? So it's still all head stuff and all thinking stuff. Mm. And instead of, oh, here's a signal, where, where do I choose to be? Do I choose to be engaging in this and where did it come from and what have I done? And, or do I choose again and come back to my heart? And how That's I it. Like That's it. And stop find, trying to find meaning in everything, blaming or um, or being in your thoughts about things, and come back to what you're feeling. And really sit with those feelings and and enjoy them. No matter what they are, enjoy the feelings as a signal, and those feelings will lead you back into your heart to make a conscious decision with you know to determine with your heart rather than your head about what is mm -hmm. or about what is appearing which may not really be what is <laughs> the, illusion. <laughs> the illusion yeah i like this one you have given others whom you see as having more authority than you license to provide you with their version of the truth and for consistency's sake, you choose to believe in the version of the truth most predominant in your society. I've lived my life like that. Believing that other people and always seeking other people's thoughts about it, opinions, approval. I've always reached out to that. That has been my life. Mm. Doing that. And there's a sadness that that's what I've done. But there's also a recognition now that I don't need to look at that or search for that or reach out for somebody else's approval or whatever society is saying approves. I'm learning and I've done recently, you know, going into my heart and going, what is true for me? What is true for me here? And it could go completely against what society is saying. Um, but there's a... a sort of an inner knowing there's not a logical you know I can say this 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 and this to try and convince another person mm. you know and who am I to step into that place of trying to convince another person to believe my version you know? and that's where the words I agree with you or I disagree with you come in from a superior point of view Karen you know because our truths change, you know, what's true for me now, I may have a big, I may have a big uh, awakening to something and my truth won't be the same as it was five minutes ago, you know, so, you know, what is truth? Is it just an illusion <laughs> or is it just a process? You know, is it something that you're just moving down through, you, you, you're just, it's, it's, the, maybe it's the continual process of just con continually finding evolution mm. from one place to another. And, um, yeah, so this, this word truth is actually quite interesting to me. And I, I think I would prefer to trust rather than to truth. <laughs> Let's go on. There's a qualifying to the word truth too. You have to qualify you know, what is true and convince somebody else that's true. Yeah, and it's none of it's none of their business. Mm. And it's none of my business what their truth is either. Mm. You know, and when we try and force others to live our truth when we're being tyrannical. We're not being leaders, we're being tyrannical and um, and that seems to be the way government and parliament want to run, run the world. So, you know, we need to change that in our family life and in our friendships where we're not forcing our truth on anyone else. We're just being surprised by our truth in this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An image came to mind, Pro, as you were talking about the sifting through, and I, it was of sand, you know, millions and trillions of particles of sand, and then 
sifting through and there's a diamond underneath, something that's glowing and bright and, and beautiful. And there's this sand that's just shifting around it as it's being shaken a little bit. And to me, it's all the, it's, it's all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the um, ways I've been in the past, the ways I've, you know, been a good girl in society. You know, they're all being um, shaken and the sands are shifting and there's something emerging that has always been there, that has always held strong and true. And I see a diamond is very, as they say, it's very uh, strong, one of the hardest substances, but beautiful in its um, essence of what it is too. Hmm. And until that diamond is faceted, Karen, you cannot see the light in it the way the faceting brings brings it out. Mm. And I, being a, I've done faceting. I did faceting for two years, and took a stone and created this amazing experience of light within this the um, the stone and. Um, so I guess we're we're very much like that. We we're continually polishing ourselves and continually shaping ourselves to be more of the light um, that we are, or sh to share more of that light that we are with others. And so that that polishing process and that shaping process is important, but it's not true that the original diamond isn't there. The diamond was always there. It's just how much light we're allowing to come through us. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Thus the truth is different in one place than it is in another, and it even appears to be in conflict. You cling to known truths even though you are aware of their instability in time as well as place. And so you live with constant denial that even what is known to you is not known at all. Yeah, and you know, we we cling to the fairy tale. That's the problem. You know, we grow we grow up with these books that tell us that, you know, happy ever after. And that, you know, you have loving parents and, and you have, um, ch you know, loving children and, and all those sorts of things. And the reality is that we're all on our own journey. And um, there is an instability in believing in the fairy tale because we're constantly disappointed when it doesn't align with our thoughts of what's supposed to be true, Karen, you know, and the tantrum happens because you're not doing what I want you to do and you're not doing what the book says, you're not doing what the fairy tale says and you're not giving me the happy ever after. <laughs> oh, I remember chucking the biggest tantrum once about that <laughs> because, you know, I just so wanted the fairy tale. I wanted loving parents. I wanted you know, a perfect relationship with my husband. I wanted children that were, you know, constantly there and, and enjoying family life together. And it just wasn't true. And when I woke up to the um, the reality of that, uh, into what what was appearing, which was real for me at the time and which was the truth at the time, uh, you know, I had uh, moments in my life where my relationship with people that I should have been absolutely there for, were, I wasn't. And, um, and I wasn't being the fairy tale for them either. So we, we just need to awaken out of the denial of, of what's real out of the illusion of what we want to be real into complete acceptance of what is in the moment of now. And that's where the truth lies. 
only in this moment. Not tomorrow, not next hour, not last year. It's here now. And and not to cling to it because in the clinging, Karen, we have almost like we're not allowing ourselves to, to really see the truth. And we need to look and look again and look again and see things differently uh, in order to see what's really appearing. Because sometimes we've got those rose-coloured glasses on and we're seeing what's not there, you know. Um, and especially if you're in a relationship that's, you know, in terms of a, lo a, a, love, a love relationship where, you know, you fall in love and suddenly the person is perfect. get married <laughs> and you discover that they're not perfect <laughs> and what's the perfection based on it's based on expectations of the fairy tale you know so we need, to, Sorry. We need to stop it <laughs> <laughs> i love that i love that the two those two words are really really important <laughs> yeah. I, I use them so playfully yes <laughs> And, and jump around in that and just thinking about I've clung all my life to fairy tales and the illusions of the happy ending and everything has fallen short I've fallen short of mm. all of those things and even when I think about the society I live in it's to get married have children have the house um, it seems to be that trajectory and yet another society might be totally different. It might be, and I, I haven't lived in an Indigenous culture or society, but it might be entirely different where you have a whole group of people and they operate differently and their values are different and their desire for things and relationships to go in a certain way even in kin, I, I'm loosely talking about this because I'm not fully cognizant, but even the rules around who you can marry in different tribes, so who you can um, actually marry, you have to work that out, who's your brother or cousin or whatever, and then um, there are specific rules around that too. So that's different, and yet that doesn't happen in this society. Um, so they are, they're so very different. And I, I am fascinated. I love different cultures and how they interact with the world. And I think there's a really good reason for that for me, to see things differently, to look at things outside of my box that has been, that I have created, living in this society, um, with those fairy tales that might not have been told to those indigenous cultures, mm. um, so they haven't set up those expectations, and I, and I would like to dismantle that. Stop <laughs> it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. You thus cling to the one sure thing that permeates your existence. The knowledge that death will claim you all you and all of those you love. Can death really claim us? That's the question. Right. What dies? <sighs> Certainly the love doesn't die. Certainly the formless can't die. So we are it's time we really started looking at our bodies as the vehicle, Karen, and we take care of it as the vehicle. We put the fuel in of the food that's good for our bodies, you know, or we put the oil in to keep the cogs turning and the knees, knee joints working and the bowel working and we put the water in so we have hydration because every cell in the body needs that water replaced every day. And we take care of this vehicle that is so 
precious for us to actually have this journey in. And without the vehicle, we can't have the physical journey on earth, but we are always here, no matter where here is, because we are formless beings inside a vehicle. And so I really don't believe in death anymore. I believe in getting out of the vehicle that's not working for me anymore, that's, that's worn out and old, and, and adventuring off into the formless. I can't wait. It's exciting. <laughs> I don't have a problem with death. And good on the Queen. She's off venturing now, having her formless experience again, you know, after a life of really service. Mm. Yeah, so let's yeah. take care of these vehicles today. <laughs> the other thing that comes to mind scientifically too as at this point in time, um, is that as as the body so-called decomposes, the cells actually transform into something else. So it's all recycled. It's all part of something else in the end. Like a tree that that is um, that so-called dies in our eyes. I'm sure they don't use the word dies as a tree. But it transforms. It, it no longer has leaves or greenery, but then it is a home for insects and little animals. And then it um, gradually becomes earth that is rich and luxurious to grow new things in. And so yeah, it's just a transformation process. And a beautiful transformation process, but the essence of that tree is still in this bedhead. You know, the spirit of the tree I'm, is giving me a place to rest every night, you know, and, you know, I, I sit at a table and eat my dinner on the spirit of the tree. I live inside the spirit of the tree in, in, the, in the house that I'm in, you know, and um, I place essential oils on my body that are made from cedar and, um, sandalwood and you know, the spirits of the trees so everything is is part of our experience and I'm never alone because I've got a tree with me wherever I go <laughs> don't you love it <laughs> yeah so <laughs> me and my tree are going to go and have breakfast <laughs> oh dear Enjoy the day. Yeah. Well, I love you. We love you. Yes, love to all. Until we meet again tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.